may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For all the follies of sin, I have resigned. My gracious Redeemer, Amen. my Savior, my friend, if there's never a time that I love you, Lord, my Jesus, it is now. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon us. Fall afresh on our hearts. Fall afresh on our minds, our souls, our spirits. Hallelujah. Fall afresh on our ways, O oh God. And draw us closer to you that we can love you, Lord, as you deserve to be loved. Hallelujah. We praise you this morning and we give you all the glory, God, and we honor you and thank you for bringing us thus far in your worship. We thank you, God, for the word that you have selected. We thank you, God, that you have selected me to bring your word. And I pray even now, God, that you will open my mouth and let me speak as you would have me speak. Let the hearts of your people, Lord, be receptive. Let the hearts of your people bow. Oh God, let them now receive as thus said the Lord. And let your name be glorified in this place and beyond the walls of this place of worship. Mighty God, I pray that even now, that your Holy Spirit will take full control and that every spirit, God, that is not of your spirit, will be escorted, God, out of this sanctuary. Hallelujah. Let your word have dominion, let your word be exalted, let your word, mighty God, go with power and let your people receive from you as thus said the Lord. We give you thanks, O oh, glory to God, and we give you all the glory, no other name but in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior and God's children will all agree and say, Amen. And amen. amen. I'm going to use Deuteronomy 6 from 4 to 9 to illustrate this message as it is entitled In Love with His Blessings Instead of the Blesser. In Love with His Blessings Instead of the Blesser. I'm going to read. Deuteronomy 6 from 4 to 9 and hear what the living God Almighty has admonished us. The word of God says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets before your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of their house and on your gates. And this is the word of God. God has and is requiring his people to love him with all their hearts and with all their souls and with all their minds. What is this possible church? Let's examine the sinful man. Can sinful man who saved by God's grace love God in such a way? And we call that love the agape love. And, and a love which transcends all love. It has nothing about itself that is for self. Don't you hear me today? 
Love the Lord your God. Although we claim that we love God, we have to admit that we might only love God to some extent. Why? Because God's not the only one we love. And because of that fact, sometimes he's not the one we love the most. The fact that so many other things tug at our hearts. We sometimes experience a consistent competition for our love and a need for something and or someone else other than the Almighty God to occupy for his place in our lives. So how can we obey the Lord's command to love him with all our heart? Truth be told, church, is that the Lord is fully aware that we who are living in our fleshly state aren't capable of this kind of love by ourselves. We need to realize and understand that when God makes a demand, that he intends to meet demand, that demand for us. And we praise God for that. We praise God for that. We cannot love God the way how he wants us to love him. But we give God the praise and the glory because Romans 5 verse 5 says, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So because he first loved us, we are therefore capable to love him back with all our hearts and with all our soul and with all our minds. What is the God's people have to resolve in their hearts that they want to love God. Amen. That you want to worship Him. Amen. That you want to have Him first place in your life. Amen. Everything else has to be taken, put back, put behind you. Amen. And God should be the one to occupy that first place in our hearts. Amen. We can do it. Amen. We can do it. We are able to do it. We are capable to do it. Because the Spirit of God is the one that helps us to love God. He poured His Holy Spirit in our hearts that we can love Him with all our hearts. You see, God would not command us to do something that He knows that we are not fully able to do. Because He's helping us to do it. Amen. But it's for God's people to want to love God and to put Him first in all things. But sometimes... The church of Jesus Christ, we sometimes compromise and we put everything else before God. We give God the what left and we go after the blessings of God with all our hearts, but not the almighty God who is the blesser. That's the issue. Everybody can claim they are blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed people of God. I, I have this and I have that. But do we boast on God like that who is the blesser? That's the one that we have to put our focus on. That's the one who we have to place all the emphasis on. Because he is our God. He's the one who is keeping us. Without him, we are not able to make it church. If God didn't love us, we would not be seated in this place worshiping him. If God didn't love us from all his heart... He would not have sent his son Jesus Christ to, to save us from the cesspool of sin. So we give God the praise and the glory. So I'm encouraging everyone this morning to make sure that you love God. And not only loving him, but loving with all your heart. It starts with the heart church. If we, if we receive Jesus Christ in our hearts, then we are able now to fashion everything else to come to the knowledge and to the understanding that God is the only true and living God. Yes, we read about Abraham this morning and what a love the man had for God Almighty. What a love and respect that Abraham had for Almighty God. And if we know the background of Abraham, Abraham was a Canaanite man. And we all know that Canaanites worship idol gods. Yes. How did it happen then for a man who was drawn out of Canaan? Uh, you know, and, and to, uh, to bring him into the light 
and for him to love God in such a way and to respect him to respect him you know sometimes folks I love God you know I love the Lord I love the Lord and if God asks them to do something they can't do it if you and I cannot be obedient to God then we don't love him we don't love him it starts with obedience church start with with obedience for us if we love someone we want to make sure that we please that person and that's the reality of love that is what true love is all about we are not going to mix any nonsense with it we're going to make sure that whatever that person wants we're going to do it abraham we know it was a hundred years when god blessed him with Isaac, his only son. Sarah was 90 years old. And the word of God says that as the boy will grow up, that God wanted to test Abraham. What a test. Wanted to test Abraham to see how deep Abraham's love was for him. Whether or not Abraham was going to love him with all his heart. This only child that this man had. And in his own age, not knowing whether or not he would have another one. And God says, look, I want you to take this boy up onto Mount Moriah. And I want you to offer him as a sacrifice. Amen. And Abraham didn't mix words. Didn't mix any word. Abraham went and he brought the child and took the boy, saddled his donkey, brought his men with him. And they head for that mountain to find it. And the good thing about it is the thing that I looked about on in, as I was reading the word of God that Abraham didn't share it with his wife Amen. because the wife would have said, Sarah would say, you're crazy? My only child you want to take from me? Abraham, God couldn't tell you to do a thing like that because he knows that we are at an age that we can't produce any more child. So how are you going to want to take my only child to sacrifice to God? So Abraham went and didn't tell his wife. Amen. Sometimes we have to hide some things from folks. If we truly want to worship God, if we truly want to love God with all our hearts and with all our souls, we have to kind of let some people behind. Amen. We have to put take some people out of the way. Because folks can stand in the way, church. Amen. Amen. Folks can stand in the way. And to avoid and to stop us from loving God. For being obedient to God. It can be a wife. It can be a son. It can be a daughter. It can be any family member. A mother or father. It can be anyone. We have to make sure that whatever we do. That it's going to please the almighty God. So the word of God says that. That Abraham went up, and that is in Genesis 22, from 1 to 19. That's where the word is found. Abraham went and started to proceed. And then as they were going up to the mountain, the young man asked his father, Father, we are going to sacrifice, and I don't see you have. You don't have any sacrifice. Who is it going to be? His father looked at him and says, don't worry yourself, son. God will provide. And they continued. The boy didn't say anything more. And when they went up, he built an altar. And the word of God says as he put the altar in place and grabbed his son to put on the altar with the knife, the word of God says an angel intervened. I am here to tell you, church, Amen. that God always provides a way out. Yes. He always sends his messenger unto you and I when we are not you know to proceed in a certain way if we love God and God stretched our faith in such a way Amen. he's going to make a way out church he just wants us to make that first move he just wants us to show that we truly love him and want to, to serve and worship him that he is the one that is occupying our whole heart that there's no one else. Just say, God is not a God who is going to play no second fiddle in anybody's life. He wants to be the first in everyone's life. And everyone comes after. 
Because he is God Almighty. He is creator of heaven and earth. And he deserves to be in that place. Yes. He is deserving of it, church. Yes. And the word of God says that the, the angel says, Abraham, don't you put hand on that boy. Don't do it. Because God has seen that. You have not withheld your only son. My God Almighty. And the, the angel of the Lord started to speak. Started to speak to Abraham. The, the angel of the Lord, after the angel of the Lord provided a lamb for the sacrifice. And Abraham sacrificed the lamb. And the word of God says, the angel says, that you, Abraham, you have shown that, that you love me with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and you have not withheld your only son. He says, blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply you. Your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. And in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned with the young child. And went on his way. Because of the man's obedience. Because church he, he passed the test. The test to say that he loves God with all his heart. You see, when God puts us to the test, it's easy for us to talk that we love. But when he puts us to the test, will, be, will we be able to pass that test? Will we be able to show God that we truly love him and there is no other? That you are my God and you're the only one I'm in love with. I'm not in love with your blessings, you see. There are some folks, you, if God, they can't see blessings from God, they don't have anything to do with God. This, no, this is God not working for me. Why should I continue to worship him? Why should I continue to be faithful to him? And I went to him for the... God is really not a Santa Claus church. He is not a jack-in-the-box. To jump out when we want him to jump out. And when we want him to stay in the box. He should stay in it. God. We have to understand this God. Who we are dealing with. We got to understand this God. Who we are talking about. And he knows all of us. We cannot. Play with him. We can tell man everything else. And we can open our mouths. And tell man. That we love them and this and that. And the next thing you know, you turn around, you want to kill that person. You don't worry like that, church. Amen. The true love of God, if it is in your heart, then you're going to love with no reservation. You're going to love my God Almighty. Whether or not that person does not come up to our standards, the standards that we put for these persons to live by. God is not like that. He's a God who loves us unconditionally. Because if he didn't love us unconditionally, none of us would be able to be seated in this sanctuary. It's because of the love of God. And if we say that we love God, then we must obey him. The word of God says in John 14, 21, He who has my commandments and keep them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself unto him. So God is a real God. If you love God with all your heart, he's going to show up for you. He's going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you and I can think about. If you love God with all your heart and you're not in love with his blessings alone. When you love him first, the blessings will come after. That is how God operates. So if we want to experience the blessings of God, we first have to love him. And when we love him, we're going to put him first. When we love him, we're going to respect him 
and make sure that we live by his word. Whatever his word says. We cannot say that we love God. And then when as we read the word of God, no, I can't, I can't do that one. God is asking for too much. I can't, I, I, I really just can't do that. Yeah, a lot of folks say that. No, I'm, I'm struggling with this one. No, if you love God, whatever God asks you to do, whatever he says to you, the first thing you're going to do is throw your hand up and, 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 and con concede to show him that you respect him and that he has the authority because the thing about God, God can command any one of us to do what he wants us to do. He does not have to depend on us to carry out anything. He can force us to do it. He can get us to do it. But God is not that kind of God. God is a loving God. He does not deal with us as if we are robots. He wants us to to use our minds and our understanding and our hearts and the free will that he has given to us that we should use it to love him and to give him that first place in our lives. Abraham was blessed beyond measure. And because of Abraham's obedience to God, here we are as children of Abraham. We are seeds of Abraham by the blood bought of the, the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for us. So we give God thanks for that. Out of one man's obedience, Amen. here we are experiencing and enjoying the love of Almighty God through the death of Jesus Christ. We got to talk about Job when you talk about a man loving God and not loving the blessings. The man was totally in love with God. And not the blessings. And we all know about Job's life. We know what he suffered. We know that in Job chapter 1. The word of God talks about him. And he gave a, 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 pre, a pre information about him. Yes. He, he gave it. He told us that Job was a righteous man. He was blameless. He was upright in heart. Yes. And that he had a lot of possessions. Yes. And the devil in hell saw all of that. The devil saw the blessing of this man. And decided that he would go right in the presence of God. To question God about Job. And his love for him. Whether or not. You see once God talk about you. The devil is going to have a lot of problem. And he's going to make sure that. He is going to put that to rest. That nothing don't go like that. He went to God and he get, and God asked him, "Where are you coming from, devil in hell, Satan? Where are you coming from?" And he says, "I have been walking to and fro over the earth." And God says, "Have you seen my servant Job?" And I kind of wonder why God would point out his servant Job. It's like he set the devil on the, his servant. He could have let Job slide by and not bring. But God knew in his heart that he could depend on Job's love for him. God knew that Job would love him whether or not he had blessings or no blessings at all. So the word of God says that. Satan says to God, the only reason why Job loves you is because you have blessed him. You have blessed him abundantly. And God says, is that so? He says, yeah. It's the blessings that you have blessed him with. That's the blessing. He loves the blessing and not you. So you don't get it mixed up, Lord. You, you, don't, you have it wrong. And God says, okay, we'll check that out. We'll make sure that when you're finished, you're going to know that my servant loves me. And the word of God says that Satan look at God and says, wait a minute. You have a hedge around him. I can't touch him. You got to remove that hedge. Take it down and give me the hit. You know, so God's children who truly love God amen. should be excited amen, amen. to know that if you love God with all your heart and with all your soul, that God has a hedge of protection around you. And the devil has no power to destroy you. 
that hedge, my God Almighty, has to be taken down by the Almighty God alone. The devil cannot tear it down by himself. Instead, he has to ask permission from God. And that's what he did. He asked permission to get a hit off Job. And God says, go ahead. Go ahead, Satan. Do as you please, but guess what? Don't touch his life. You can't touch him. You can't kill him. Take everything from him because that is what you're contending about. You're saying to me that my servant doesn't love me. That my servant is just in love with the blessings that I have blessed him with. And the next thing you know, the devil went and he killed every family that Job has. All Job's children, sons, just went just like that. One hit and they were all gone. But we give God the praise and the glory that when it was all done, that Job stood his ground. Amen. Job didn't start to cry and said, my God, look how much I love God. And God took one hit and killed all my, let the devil kill all my children. No, Job says, naked I come from my mother's womb. And naked shall I return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you imagine how confused the devil was? He was surely confused because he thought that once all of Job's children had died, that Job would be wallowing in misery and cursing God out. How am I living for you? And now you are supposed to provide and to protect my children. And you allow the devil to kill them. How many of us church. Really. If we have lost everything. Our children. Everything. Our ox. Everything. Everything that God blessed us with. That it was ripped away. In just one shot like that. So we have to put things in perspective. Because the thing that I know is that. The things that we have in the natural can be taken away just like that. The things that we have, the material things, can just be wiped away. And if it's taken away, can we still praise God? Can we still lift up the name of God? Can we still love God if we are not in love with the blessings? Can we still love God if it is God that we love from all, from our hearts and our souls and with our mind? It's for something that we have to give some kind of thought to. We have to give some thought to that. Can God use or allow the enemy to take away our blessings and still we continue we will we continue to love God? Will we continue to praise Him? Really? Would we be able to do it like how Job did it? It is for us to think about. It's food for thought. It's food for thought. But the thing that I know, because Job praised God, Job basically have lived the word of God, that is, as it is said in Psalm 91, from 14 to 16, the word of God says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him, and I will set him on high, because he has known my name, that he shall call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him with long life, I will satisfy him and show him, my salvation. Yes, God is faithful to his people. That if you love God without reservation, if you are not in love with the blessings, and you are in love with the Almighty God, whatever comes to us, we can praise God through it. We can still give God the glory and the honor and the power and the dominion. Job had a second round with the enemy. And this time, we know what he did. He inflicted Job's body. Because you see, when the devil takes a gaze at us, he's not just going to give up on that like that. He wants to take us out. He wants us to get to curse God. And it's God's people have to know that. Job was fully aware 
that no matter what he is done to him, that's, that cannot shake his love for God. It cannot shake him and stop him from blessing the Almighty God. So the word of God says he inflicted Job's body with boils and Job was in pain night and day, suffering in ashes, laying down my God Almighty. And the word of God says his friends and his wife, Job's wife looked at him and said, man, why don't you curse God and die? And Job says, foolish woman, who are you to talk like that? Why can I not, why cannot if I accept good from him, why cannot I accept the bad things as well? Faith in God, my Father in heaven. Faith in God will bring us through all that we go through. The faith as our faith anchored in God Almighty. Then we will be able to go and ride through all the storms of life. Job didn't curse God. Job continued to live for God. Because if you go to Job chapter 19 from 23 to 27, the word of God says that Job says, all oh, that my words were written, all oh, that they were inscribed in a book, that they were engraved on a rock with an iron pen and lead forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives and he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold him, and not another, how my heart yearns within me. So Job basically confused the devil in hell. And if God's people are truly in love with God Almighty, we will be able to confuse the enemy when he comes to take us out like a flood. God Almighty will raise up a standard against him. And God Almighty will rule forever. Despite the fact that he inflicted Job and took everything that Job had. Job consistently loved God. Job didn't give up on his love for God. And that attests to the man's integrity. It attests to his soul that he was totally committed and sold out to God Almighty. And nothing could have shaken anything that happened to him. He would stand and go through by the strength of Almighty God. And the word of God concludes with Job's story. That because Job remained consistently faithful in his love for God, that God blessed him in the latter days. God returned everything that he, the devil stole. He did it within, by, by tenfold. Amen. The word of God, if you go to Job 42 from 12 to 17, you will see the confirmation there. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. For he was, for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters and he called the name of the first Jemima, the name of the second Keziah and the name of the third Karen Hapush. In all the land were found so beautiful as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them an inheritance among their brethren. Job came out as fine gold. And that is what God does for his people. When you can stand up for God, when you can stand up for the almighty God, God is not going to make you, he's not going to let you down. If you love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, he is going to restore everything that the devil steals from you. Anything that the devil takes away to try to get you not to love the Almighty God. God will restore it. He will restore the years that the swarming locust has eaten. And the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. My great army which I send among you, the word of God says in Joel 2. He says, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dwelt 
dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never ever be put to shame Amen. I wish church that this young ruler had stood up from almighty God like that this young ruler, the word of God that Jesus Christ came in contact with in Luke chapter 18 from 19 to 30. The word of God says that this young man came to Jesus. All thought He thought that he was all together. That he loved God. He did everything to please him. The word of God says that he came and he asked Jesus, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And he thought when he came that he had it all done pat. He thought that he was already a recipient of eternal life. But he was just coming to Jesus just to show himself off. And Jesus Christ looked at him, the word of God says. And Jesus says, he says, you know the commandments. Do not commit murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said, all these things I've kept. I'm, I have it. I have it done packed. I love the Lord. In short, that was, that's what he was saying. Because if he says he kept God's command, he's prof professing, that, professing that he loved God. And Jesus looked at him and just said to him, you lack something. You lack one thing. All you have, what God bless you with. Go sell it and give it to the poor and come follow me. And the word of God says he was very distraught. He was very upset and sad in his heart. Because the man had a lot and couldn't depart from it. The blessings, he was in love with the blessings despite the fact that he came thinking that he loved God with all his heart and with all his soul. Jesus said, get rid of them. Everything you have, sell it out and give the money to the poor. And come follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. And the word of God says that he was very sad. He couldn't do that. I'm in love with the blessings. I'm not in love with the Lord. And it was all panned out. It all came out church. It all came out in his actions. And we got to be careful as children of God that we cannot have anything, everything that we have all put together and we think that God shouldn't touch that. Or it, you can only have dominion in here. Don't touch this, but don't, don't touch over there. It doesn't work like that. When you love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, everything is open to God. God can touch or tell you to get rid of this or get rid of that, or take this, or take that. You are free, and your mind and your heart is willing to give up whatever God says that you are to give up. You might have an actual lifestyle or certain things that you do. Can you give it up? Can you give it up? Can you show God that you love Him with all your heart and with all your soul? If you know that there is something that is coming between you and God. Can you freely deliver it over and say, God, please take this one out of my life. I want to love you and you alone. And this thing is coming up always before me. God will tear away any idol from his people's lives. If God wants you to serve him with all your heart and to love him, with all your soul, and you are having a problem to do that, and you are a chosen vessel of Almighty God, He will do it for you and I. I'm here to tell you, He will do it for you and I. He's not going to leave that decision anymore to us because He is ultimate, the Creator God. And everything the Word of God says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world's and they. That dwell therein. So if you and I belong to God, He is able to do whatever He wants to do with us, and He can do it. So it's for us, church, it's for us to take a look and examine ourselves. Do I truly love God? Or is it the blessings that I'm in love with? 
Is it because I hear that God is good and that he has power to do so and so? Is it because that you think that God is able to help you out if you're in trouble or anything like that? Is it because of what he can do for you or because of who he is to you? It is for us to look into that. It is for us to give it a thought. Hear what Proverbs 3 from 3 to 10 says. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. Love him. And he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. I just am in love with Saul who turned Paul. Because the man was willing to give up everything freely. He says, whatever I have gained, I count it as rubbish. Because I want to get to know this God who he is. I want to get to know this God who has blessed me with eternal life. I want to get to know him. I, I, I want to be in love with him. That I can be wrapped up with him and totally sold out to him. God is looking for children of his who are willing to give him that first place in his or her life. That's what God wants. All he wants. He challenged Abraham. He challenged Job. The rich young ruler was also challenged. And he failed the challenge miserably. But I'm here to tell you, church, that if you consciously and decide that you want to love God, God will help you to do it. He will get you and I, and he will transform us and get us to that place that he wants us to be. Because there's only when we get to that place, it's only when we love God with all that we have inside of us, it's only when we give up everything that we think we have to lay hold on and to continue to hold on to. It's only when we let it go and let God be head and be ruler in our lives. Then that is the day we are going to start living. Until then, you and I will continue to keep on being in love with the blessings instead of the blessings. And I'm going to use Deuteronomy 10 from verses 12 to 14 and 17 to 21 to challenge this church and to bring this message to a close. And the word of God says, And now, O Israel, O church of Jesus Christ, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to love him to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which I command you today for your good. Indeed heaven and the highest heavens belong to the Lord your God. Also the earth with all that is in it. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords and great, the great God and mighty and awesome. And who shows no partiality, nor takes a bribe. He administers justice for the fatherless and the widow, and loves the stranger, giving him food and clothing. You shall fear the Lord your God, and you shall serve him. And to him you shall hold fast, and take oaths in his name. He is your praise, and he is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. Yes, in love with the blessings instead of the blesser can be dangerous. So I challenge you, Lord Church, to switch it around. 
be in love with the blesser unless with the blessings because the blessings are temporal unless they are blessings that we can transfer into eternity that's when we can talk about blessings blessings are only those truly if you give it a thought the blessings of almighty god truly are those that can be transferred to eternal life when we get eternal life anything else all this prosperity nonsense it's just a matter of time if it is in the different things the materialism of life they're going to fade away they're going to pass you can't take them beyond this life with you so why would we want to fall in love with those things why would we want to fall with the things that are temporal that you can't take with you at the end of your walk and your journey when it is finished it is all done and you can't do a thing with them you have to leave it to somebody else who is behind you and guess what if you put your heart in it the person who you leave it to might squander it and throw it away and mess it up and have no respect for it and yet we give our lives for that which we we exchange eternal life for that for that kind of blessing so when folks tell you about prosperity on earth you would tell them about the only prosperity that you know Amen. is the one that you're seeking in the blesser the one who has blessed you beyond measure Amen. Amen. and that is the blessings that God's people need to go after Amen. I'm going to use this word in Ephesians 6 from 23 to 24 peace to you brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ grace be with you all grace be with you all who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity amen